Yes, I am conference. So we are very happy to have you here. Uh, not only people from IMIM, but from our, our other programs, the MBAs, also people who are online connected, also from our undergraduate courses. So uh, we're very happy to have today Jose Maria Cuellar. He's a telecom and tech uh, executive. Okay, He's also a professor in UPM and other different schools. And he's about to go back into consultancy now. I think he will tell you more about that. So um, please welcome him and let's give him uh, a big applause. <laughs> And uh, many thanks for having me today here. It's a it's a honor. Um, so I have a a personal story for you. Um, Okay, now it's working. This is the, the telephone in junior school at the Technic University of Madrid, uh, where I spent uh, six years, uh, some years ago. And after my career, I started a, a professional career, mainly in the Telefonica group. Uh, I've been working there for uh, almost uh, 30 years. So the point is that uh, while in my professional career, I've reflected uh, several times about, uh, I have to, to highlight uh, two, uh, one or two um, milestones in business or, or, or in technology that have shaped my career, uh, what would be? So I realized that these two uh, uh, milestones could be uh, the internet and the mobile, both technology and, and uh, business. So the, the happy thing is that None of those uh, topics were covered in my in my studies because internet was still when I started my career. Internet, internet still uh, was a, a research communication network, and mobile technology came much later, about uh, in two, 2001 or more or less. So. What is my first point for you? Uh, my first point for you is that if you invest in education, it is the best decision you can make in life. And probably your career will start when you finish here. But, and if you want to be in business, you need to uh, study the rest of your life. And mainly if you are working in technology. So you won't become obsolete in your professional career. So I think you that you have made the right decision. I think you deserve an applause for yourself. So please take an applause. Thank you. Thank you. This is a, a way I usually start many of my speeches. So Probably if you, if you go into the internet, you will find this again. Uh, um, and I, I will introduce myself. So I'm Jose Maria Puella. You can find me in any of, of those uh, networks. And the network that I like the most is the Flickr, which is uh, and also a photographer. Um, as, as uh, Isaac uh, mentioned before, so I've been working in the Telefonica group uh, uh, for years. Uh, now I'm working again because I, I, I left Telefonica last May, so I'm, I'm working again in the Telefonica services since last Monday. So 
And let's see. So the speech I've, I've prepared for you today is, is about my experience in uh, strategy in the personal company. I've uh, been in, in several strategy positions that I think the most important was in the, in the corporate center, uh, where I, I worked there for four years, um, dealing with a, a corporate strategy in the internet and media business. So I'm, I'm going to show you how we work with, uh, there. Uh, of course, it is this uh, an introduction uh, uh, about the uh, job uh, there. And I think it, it would be very interesting for you because uh, it's, it's a way to, uh, to understand how uh, the great, uh, a very large multinational uh, uh, how, how they, uh, they work. So, but first, let me let me give you uh, a short profile about what uh, the Telefonica group is. So, Telefonica is, is a, an almost one hundred years uh, history uh, company. It was founded in, in nineteen twenty four in Madrid, and I would highlight, I would highlight uh, here the history. Of Recent history of the company, I think uh, three three months. The first is the, the acquisition in, in year two thousand of the of several uh, operators in, in Latam, uh, where we are, we acquired uh, Brazil, uh, Argentina, Chile, Peru uh, operations, uh, one hundred percent of the of the operations, and. The expansion in Europe uh, ahead of, of Spain came a little later. It came in, in the year uh, uh, 2006 uh, by the acquisition of uh, all two in the UK. It was a challenger mobile operator in, in, in the UK with operation also in Germany and in Ireland. Uh, we Telefonica sold the island operation uh, some years ago, but uh, Germany is, is still uh, there. Uh, in terms of, of the main uh, APIs, I, 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 I can show you about Telefonica. These are uh, 100, more than 100,000 employees in the rest of the, of the world. In Spain and the rest of the world. My current employer is uh, 600,000, so I'm completely shocked by, by that the point, uh, point. So I need it's a, um, uh, a company with uh, this operation operating in 12 countries. It used to be a 17 countries, a company person, but now they are operating in, in 12 countries. And um, in terms of, of customers and revenue, but it's a, a good uh, KPI to, to understand how big is a, is a company. It's a company with more than 300 uh, million customers around the world and about uh, 40 billion uh, revenue in the last uh, fiscal year. Uh, the interesting point is that as a, as a healthy multinational, 78% uh, of that revenue comes uh, from uh, four key markets. Uh, only uh, more or less a third of the revenue comes uh, from Spain. Right? In terms of, of business, I, I think you, you should know that Telefonica is number one in mobile and fixed uh, operations in Spain and in Brazil. Uh, and also, it's very well positioned in, in the UK because the, the, the O2 operation, uh, I mean, you probably know, it's uh, merged with Virgin uh, uh, Mobile. Uh, since uh, last uh, June. So they are uh, a, a 
everybody is a strong competitor in, actually in, in the, in the uh, British uh, market. How is uh, rated the, the company? Is, if we uh, have a look uh, in, in the third quarter, okay. So it is the thirty-first uh, company in. in you only see the segment of, of, of telephones in the world. And it used to be number eight, the, the position that today is located uh, 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 right? uh, It is a ninth uh, company in Spain by market cap. It depends uh, on, on, on the day. Some days, Telefonica is number eight. Uh, some days, it's number nine. It used to be number one. Uh, the beginning of the, of the century. And this, uh, this uh, dropout of the company is something we are going to, to reflect today. What's, what's going on in the telco business? Um, why all the telcos in, in the world are, are struggling in, in their business? Uh, okay, so what's, what's the job of, of a corporate strategy? Strategies in in, in, a in, a, in a big company. So let me show first. Show you first. What is the strategic process? This is very specific for Telefonica, but I think that in, in all the big companies it's almost the same. So it is a it is a, about three processes. The first one is to uh, to build a long-term vision. You have to learn to build it, that vision based on strategic insights and also a strategic vision and a, an, an equity story. As you probably know, the equity story of uh, every company is the is is story that explains why this is a successful company. This is the first, uh, the first uh, step. Uh, the output of, of this uh, step is uh, that for the internet communications and technology industry, that it is a, it's a, a hyper sector, we could say, where a telco is, is competing, you have to build two things. First, a sector view in order to identify and analyze what's the industry uh, trends that are going on there. And second, uh, a value chain analysis. And we will see later why, why a value chain analysis is an important uh, in corporate uh, strategy. Second step is planning, basically defining strategic priorities and developing financial projects. This is usually built in a, in a company by a finance uh, department. And that's the case in, in telephonic as well. And finally, you need to execute your strategy. And in execution, you have two types of, of, of uh, projects. Uh, first, transformation projects that are very big and, and, and transversal to the whole company and geography projects, and also business development project, project where, where, where your uh, objective is uh, value creation, both organic and also through alliances. Uh, I used to have a, a boss uh, that uh, told me that the main point in a strategic process, as probably you, you can guess, is the execution part. So building a strategy is in some way very, very easy. If you don't have the capabilities inside your company, you can find a team and they will build it for you. But the, the, the very strong point is how do you will develop, how are you going to implement this strategy? And what's the focus in, in a corporate strategy unit in the, in the first uh, step, right? Building this long term vision. And this is what uh, the rest of the, of the presentation is, uh, is about. Uh, what are the tools that, that you have in order to, to build this uh, long-term vision? Uh, 
So, but I, I uh, remember that, that you have to be a sector view and a, and a value chain analysis. So, you have two sources of knowledge. The first one is investment bank report. So, Telefonica guys is subscribed to a number of, of investment banks that uh, every day they provide you uh, with a number of, of reports. Very interesting. And that are uh, financial reports. Yeah. And the second, uh, second uh, pillar, I would say, is industry analysis reports. So Telefonica, again, is subscribed to a number of industry analysts. And with these two uh, sources of, of knowledge, you have to build this uh, sector view and value chain to provide a so what for Telefonica group and your internal customer is the board of directors, the strategic committee, and the group uh, executive committee. Right? Uh, how is this value chain analysis performed? So the first thing you have to, to do is uh, to establish what is your value chain in the business you are competing. So starting with the customer, first in a telecom or extended uh, hypersector internet communications and technology uh, industry, the first thing that, that a customer uh, is aware is the device. So if you were chatting before, uh, you have a laptop, and probably at home you have a TV set or a PlayStation. So you interact with uh, uh, communications and, and internet services with a, with a device, right? Then, uh, this is the concept of the, the packet of the telecom uh, companies. So you need to connect this device with a telecom technology to the internet or, or uh, and, and the services that, uh, that uh, will provide you what you want. So connectivity and who provides, who, who is the the provider of technology uh, of a telco company, internet uh, services and network company. So, so this is a, a technology uh, bucket uh, where you can find network equipment, IT services, and contractors, so technology in, in that world. And then we have two more buckets, one for the digital services that you can find in the internet, and we have uh, this category, commerce, search, online travel, etc. And finally, content creation. And content creation by uh, producers and, and developers of, of content, for instance, HDO uh, or Disney, and also um, user generated. Right? And this is uh, the value chain we construct uh, some years ago in Telefonica. How uh, do we study what's going on uh, there? So uh, we study a number of companies uh, in every chain of the, of the value chain, in every package of the value chain. Uh, Apple de Novo, Samsung in the first one, 50 telcos in the second one, and then the company that you that you put in money in the rest of the of the elements of, of, the, of the value chain. So the point is that yeah. just a start background thing that some of the people here are preferring the case of Xiaomi. Ah interesting. Okay, Xiaomi uh, probably is there in, in, the, in the devices uh, in the so the point is, is that if you take if you take uh, fifty the first fifty companies uh, in the telco and ordered by market cap and fifty companies in the rest of the value chain, 
Then what you get is, and you sum up, uh, aggregate the value, the market cap of all those companies. The point is that you reach the, I don't know the word in English, the asymptote of, the, of that group of, of market value. So uh, you don't need to include more than 100 companies in this analysis in order to get a very uh, accurate uh, picture of what's going on in, in the industry, right? So 50 uh, telecom companies and 50 companies in the rest uh, of the uh, chains of the value itself. So this is a, a very difficult analysis to perform, they basically because you, you have to do this analysis every quarter, and you have a very limited uh, human resources in, in, in a strategic corporate team. So probably you only have 10, 15 analysts. So we will see later how, how is this uh, achieved. Uh, so here is a, an example uh, ex extracted from, from documentation with Monica provides every every month with, with this uh, analysis, and you have in the in the uh, left hand of the, of the slide the telecom uh, uh, companies, and in the other uh, the right side uh, internet and media companies. So we have here fifty and fifty in the in the right side. So now let's see why corporate strategies. So why why strategies do this work? And I have a, a question for you. And it's this. So what's the winning strategy if you go first in a in a sale in a sale first? So I don't know if we I'm from the Canary Islands, so uh, an island, so the seas in the, the island, and I used to be a sailor. So, uh, so in, in, a, in a race, in, in a sailor race, there is a, a winning struggle. If you, go, if you go first in the race, what should you do in order to win the race 100% certain? And this is how. Something that happened in, in history in the America's Cup. As you know, the America's uh, Cup is a very famous race. It's a race with uh, more than one century of history. And uh, the race uh, is, uh, they are racing two, ship, two, two uh, ships uh, from two teams. First, first uh, Jack in the back. Jack is a, is a the, the defender of the cup, and the second one is the, is the, is the challenge. So after uh, almost uh, or more than one uh, century, the, the United States uh, team winning the, the, the America, American America's Cup in year in the year 1993. The Australian uh, won the race, and the uh, funny thing is that, that they, as, as is in every race until that year, the, the United States uh, team was first. And what happened? Uh, what happened is that if you go first. The only thing you have to do is copy your competitors. So you, you have to look backwards and what they are doing, you will say, and you will win the race. This is something that the uh, American uh, didn't uh, do uh, in that race. They, they, uh, copying your competitor is a winning strategy. We have a, a Many examples in the, in, in the industry, in, in, and more in the in the technology industry, of this uh, funny thing. 
Sure. You can have, uh, remember the Instagram stories, if you are an Instagrammer, it's a copy from uh, Snapchat uh, guys. Or you also have FedEx and UPS, or your uh, job, you, the work you will have uh, next week, Xiaomi, it's a copy cut of, of, of Apple. The only product of Apple is, is, is Xiaomi uh, and copy. You will also have Google and Amazon, uh, or Lando, that is a German company that eBay not only copy them, but also they bought them at the end and second in them. So, copy your competitor is a good strategy. And if you go through, for instance, the Harvard Business Review, they are, they are recommending you that you don't know how, how to innovate, copy your competitor. That's, that's okay. So that's one of the reasons why you have to find which of these 50 and 50 companies are performing uh, well and, and then copy what they are doing or try to understand what, what they are doing. Copy them in order to, to give to your uh, market the same products or the best practices that, that they, they are implementing. And this is very common in a business. Second point uh, I wish to highlight here for you is, something? sorry? Can I ask something? Yeah, of course. You can have a problem with the um, Royal competition with copying all the times you you could have this problem, so you have to do it properly. Um, there, there are a number of companies that are, that are that so you, you could have a problem with uh, a legal problem in your, in your market, of course. You can, you can. But I think that if it's a, if there is no uh, um, a specific IP, I mean intellectual property. And very, very well and properly registered in, in the market, it is very easy to, to copy your competitor. But you can copy um, products or you can copy best practices. That, that is the main point that Telefonic and Fact is doing copying best, best practices. So when you copy a best practice, of course, someone can sue you, but it's very, I think it's very hard to, to prove that you are copying. So you, you, you need to prove that you were spying your competitors. So this, uh, this is not uh, uh, legal. If you are a spy and you are whatever to, you know, to come up with what, what your competitor is doing. But if you are only uh, having a look, that's a problem. Do you work in a company uh, where we have a lot of problems with this, like for the property? Yeah. We don't work with it. Mm -hmm. It was a day that we don't work in it. Mm -hmm. And we had a lot of troubles with the um, CSL because of it. Okay. Mm -hmm. They were all the time copying us. Now, oh, right. It's, it's what I was uh, saying before. So if, if there is an IP, it's a uh, hard. If, if you are not uh, working in China, like, working in China, the, the IP no problem. In uh, Europe or in the United States or in the uh, Western uh, economy, uh, you have a problem if you are copying. That's right. But there is no problem if you are copying best practice. Okay. And we will have a, I'm, I'm showing you a, an example of what is uh, best practices, what, what's the rule they have in a, in a telecom uh, business, right? Okay, thank you for your question. Of, of course, anyone who has a question, uh, interrupt me. Uh, so um, the other point is what we call a uh, frenemies. So frenemies is an acronym uh, 
that is emerging uh, a friend and an enemy, of course, in, in business. Uh, usually, it used to be in the, in the, in the companies that were competing in the, in the madman world, there were only friends and enemies. Right? You, you have competitors, or you have a friend, a provider, or an alliance with other companies. Yeah, it was uh, no sense or very difficult to, to think about that, that, that a company that is competing with you could also be a, a friend of you or a provider. But the point is that in, in technology, this uh, behavior is very, very common. And I will show you an, an example. Now, you know, Apple is a, a hardware manufacturer company, and one of the, the products is a, a Tablets, no? and also you have Amazon. And it's a there is a, it's a retailer, a commercial retailer, but they also manufacture their businesses a, a, a tablet. This is a Fire a tablet you can buy in Amazon, um, and they also. Uh, are competing in, in books, in the, in the books uh, uh, selling uh, business. So, uh, Apple, you can find that it's, it's the, the logo of the iBooks uh, application that you can find it in, in, the, in the Apple uh, iPad or, or Mac computer. And of course, Amazon, Amazon, they also have a, as they are a good retailer, you have the application for uh, browsing and reading books. That's a, a very well known Kindle application. The funny thing is here, or the strange thing here, is that you can find in the uh, iPad, Apple device, a uh, Kindle application that in theory is competing with them in the iBooks uh, business, but you can't find this application in a file pay, uh, tablet. So who can say me what's going on here? Why Amazon is not um, enabling the iBook application in, in the tablets? You know what? Why? It's a very cool person who wants the iBook application. Why? No, in fact, they, in fact, they want to have a like, and they just compete with their own uh, software. Uh, no. Yeah, but, but they, in fact, they want to, to provide the, the application and to sell more books in, in, in other platforms. They have their device for application for reading the tablet is like the device as well. Okay, you're near. You're near the, the right answer. So, that's another huh? And just because to, because Apple wants to differentiate themselves, they want to be part of the clients. Okay, so the reason is somewhat uh, tricky. I mean, it, it's uh, uh, developed in the paper I, I showed I show you in the, in the previous slide. So the point is, you, you have to see what is the core business of every company. So core business of uh, for Apple is hardware manufacturing. So that's the way they make money, by selling devices. And books, book selling, it's just a secondary uh, business for them. But in the case of, of Amazon, it's the opposite. So selling books is the core business. And selling hardware is, is just a secondary business. So you can allow other company that is competing with you in a secondary business to uh, sell if this is a, to sell in your uh, 
a business operation. So Apple, uh, they don't have any problem to allow the Amazon guys to give the, the, the Kindle uh, application there in their uh, tablet uh, device. Why? They are not competing in the, in the core business, but by doing so, they are giving more value to the device that they are selling that precisely is the core business. You know? That's, so, but if Amazon did the same, and they allow Apple to compete with them in the fire tablet, they were attempting to their main business, their core business. And that's the reason. And in, in, in the industry, there are a lot of examples about, about this uh, behavior. For example, you have Netflix and Amazon uh, Prime. Amazon also have a, a AWS, that, that is a cloud company. AWS is providing the whole infrastructure of all of Netflix. Netflix. So Netflix is uh, competing against Amazon in the, in the uh, all the streaming, uh, TV streaming um, business, but the technology and infrastructure provider is the competitor. And the, 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 the reason is the same as, as we have uh, shown here. So the point is that when core business are different, if you take a company that is competing with you in a secondary business, you take, you bring this company into your uh, core business, then the value that you are generating, those companies are generating, is uh, higher than if they go uh, along each other. And this mathematically, I promise you, prove pro in, the, in the paper that I shown. And this is a good point because. And this is another reason why you have to find companies that would be friends for you. Because if you find them, you can bring these companies into your offer. And this is something that Telefonica and other companies are doing. You can bring these companies into your offer. You will uh, enhance your, your offering to, to, uh, to your customers. You will bring more revenue. But you are not uh, going against your uh, core business. So it's something that's very, uh, it's very interesting from a company perspective. Uh, this is something that was not clear uh, for Telefonica a years ago. So a years ago, Telefonica uh, thought that they were competing against Apple and against uh, Google and against the internet companies, and of course, against Netflix uh, or Amazon Prime or whatever. And today, Telefonica is uh, bundling all of the services of those companies into the offer. And the reason is, is, is that of the, of the frenemies, uh, the frenemies uh, phenomenon. So here is a company, this is a slide from, from a presentation uh, some years ago in, in Telefonica that is from, this is a study performed uh, by my team uh, trying to, uh, to uh, find uh, what, which companies in, in the hyper sector would be good frenemies for telephone, right? And if you have, uh, here, uh, for example, Microsoft or Dropbox or Netflix or SoundCloud or music or companies like that. So you, the point is you, again, you, you can incorporate this, uh, the, the products of, of these companies into your offer, offer and your offer will uh, be boosted by, by these uh, uh, products. And you are, you are not attentive to your product. The value you are creating is higher than people just competing. Uh, uh, Summarizing, so 
Remember, you have to find successful companies in the ICT industry, industries to first understand the strategy in order to compete more effectively uh, with, uh, with them. Uh, second, copy best practices. And third, partner with them if they complement the, your uh, formula. So, trying to find frenemies in order to complement your uh, mates. And now, the third point how is this job done? Because, sorry, because uh, as I told you before, in a corporate strategy unit, they are working uh, less than 20, 20, uh, 20 analysts. So the, the resources you have are, of course, very limited. And you have a lot of work to do. Because you have to analyze 100 companies, 50, 50 from the uh, telecom sector, and 50 from technology and, and internet. So how can you perform this? So you have two problems, basically. The first problem is that you need a definition of about what is success. And this is a tricky point, because this is not evident. So how, how can you define that a, a company is successful? Here is some echo of the standard of um, four, the 500. Um, and the number that is depicted uh, under each company is, is their um, uh, share of pre sale, the, how the, the share benefit, the benefit per share is appreciated in, in the last uh, five years. So that could be a measure, but are we confident with that this is the, the best way, or what should we do? The revenue or a bit down or margin. So, and also the second point, the second problem you have is that in some way you have to simplify your analysis because you, you don't have resources to do this analysis for 100 companies every quarter. So you have to define success and you have to simplify your problem. And the way we we found to do that is uh, basing up uh, taking the PSR KPI as a base of our analysis. So the PSR is the total shareholder return. I'm going to explain to you uh, what is this uh, very important financial KPI. So the PSR uh, gives you. What is, of course, the, the, the return a shareholder that has, has invested in a company, the, the return uh, he or she has in a period of time. Usually, this period of time is one, three, or uh, five years. And you have two components of, of the tech TSR. The first one is, of course, of course, what has been the appreciation of the share. In the period, and second, the dividend yield that is the, the profitability of the dividend that you have received in that period. Let me show you an example. So, imagine that uh, in January the 1st, you buy a share of one company and it costs you eight uh, euros, and by December the, the uh, 31st, uh, you could buy this uh, share by nine years. And in the, in the year, you receive a dividend of a half uh, of a year. What is the total share for the return for this investor? So you have from the side of the share price of appreciation, of course, it's nine minus eight by eight, uh, divided by eight. And then you have 12.5%. A return considering only the application of the share, but you also receive the dividend. So if you divide this dividend by the money that you have provided in order to get this dividend that is paid, 
then you you got another 6.25% from the dividend part of the, of the, of the picture. Right? So the point is that at the end of the period, your TSR for this investment is 18.75%. It's very good. So the problem here is that if you, so you, you could be tempted to, so, okay, that I have solved my problem. The only thing I have to do is calculate the TSR for the 50 companies, and then I will order the table, starting with, with the first one, up there, the Taiwanese company chapter, 55.5%, so that's the first company, and to the, to the last one. Uh, but, but the problem is that there is a tricky point here, is, uh, and, and, and it's that this is not giving you any information about uh, how this company is managed. You only have the financial information. But there is something worse that, uh, that is that the management of every company would be in some way tuning the DSR by the application of the dividend. So you, you could uh, you can uh, give dividends to, to your shareholders and you are in some way uh, making up your, uh, your numbers and you could be appearing as a good managed company, but, but and you are losing uh, uh, revenue or whatever and uh, your, your shareholders or your investors could be uh, about a misleading uh, impression of, of what of the performance of your, of your company. Uh, so how can you uh, escape from, from this, uh, this uh, tuning uh, of your, by the way, for example, Microsoft was doing this uh, dividend in some way engineering in, in the last uh, decade. So before the cloud business, from the year 2000 to more or less 2012, they were not growing in the business and they were, they, the only way they were growing in the server was by providing a good dividend. It is something that you could do, you can do uh, in a period of time, you know, all, all, all the time. So you will understand what I am saying in a couple of minutes. So the point is that you can uh, break the TSR APR in three components that are pretty related with the management of the, of the company. So it is uh, you, we can we could demonstrate with mathematics that, that this is what I'm going to show you is right. We don't have time to do that, so we will have to do a but to have faith in me that what I'm showing you is, is right, but I mean it's right. So you can decompose uh, the TSR in three components. The first one is what we call is the fundamentals. The fundamentals this is a component that is proportional to revenue growth and margin growth. Right? The second component is what we call sustainability, that is how your valuation multiple uh, enterprise value uh, by uh, uh, divided by EBIT is growing. These are a uh, parameter that uh, is showing how the investment community is uh, confident in that your business will, uh, will be sustainable in the future, right? So if this number is very low, for example, Apple has a very low sustainability uh, number. What the investor community is, is uh, uh, believing is that probably your business will fail in the future and that is not that sustainable. In general, product companies have a sustainability uh, uh, parameter lower than service company. And this is very easy to understand, right? Because a service company is 
is uh, getting revenue continuously from the customers. And a, and a product company, every year, you have to sell the same one, the same amount you, you sold uh, the year before, and a plus in order to grow. Right? And the second uh, and the third uh, element is how are you using your cash flow? That is what I was mentioning before that companies that are not that good in fundamentals and sustainability, they can take the cash flow we use in order to hide problems in revenue growing or margin growing or sustainability. Right? So you sum some the, the three elements. And you got the same PSR as, as if you were calculating uh, it uh, with the formula before. And now, how do you define success? First, you need PSR positive, of course. If PSR is not positive, this is a not successful company. Uh, you are not returning. Uh, anything to your shareholders and, and second second you need that both fundamentals and sustainability are also positive and then uh, mixing the two uh, conditions you can uh, you can order the, the table in that way so you can select you can select the companies that are selected that in the, in the uh, green box that were not that evident in the table before. So you, you will not, you won't select, for instance, the OE or Vodacom or Verizon if you were selecting uh, 10 or, or 8 companies, just ordering them by the DSR. And if, that's the way we will do that. So, of course, this don't automatically there are a, a, there is a, an excel application that, that is taking data from the uh, blue layer terminal with, with all of this um, uh, information and building automatically uh, uh, the calculations in order to, to have this, uh, this table, right so and also this is a way to simplify the problem this is not a way to define success it's a way to simplify the problem. Why? Because at the beginning of the exercise, you have 50 companies. Then if you only select PSR positive, you reduce the problem to 34. If you go ahead and only select those companies with um, uh, fundamentals and sustainability positive, you have 28 companies and at the end of the analysis, if both fundamentals and sustainability are uh, positive, then you reduce the problem to 12 companies. Right? So you start with 50 and you reduce the, the problem to 12. So that 12 companies are the companies that you have to analyze. Uh, and that is something that you can perform with the uh, analysis. So this is an example, one uh, of, those, of those analysis where we analyze uh, telecom uh, companies and we got some highlights about the best practices in several operations in, in, a, in a telecom business. For example, channel digitalization or differential customer insights or innovation in pricing or whatever from offering product simplification or automatic the automation of the, of the key processes or whatever this is uh, some uh, uh, huge, huge that, that we got from, from the, those companies uh, in order to understand why are they performing so so good And finally, uh, I will give you a highlight about 
the present and future problems that telecom operators uh, are facing. Uh, you have the performance in the last uh, 10 years. If we went to 10 years more, it would be uh, even uh, worse, the picture. And you have in, in, in blue, and here, for example, uh, the, the enterprise flat value or the market cap. Uh, in blue, you have the uh, ICT companies ex excluding telecoms, telecoms. And in gray, you have just the telecoms. And what we can see here is that in the last 10 years, uh, the growth in terms of enterprise value or market cap of the telco sector is, is absolutely uh, uh, stuck. And even worse, the uh, internet and technology companies are growing exponentially. And the gap is growing exponentially. And this is a very, a very hard position for the uh, telecom companies. They're very, very, very hard. And if you go, for example, uh, to my we love company Telefonica. Uh, this, is, this is a picture of the share value in the last, from the beginning of the century, in the last 20 years. And as we could see here, after the dot com crisis, the dot com, dot com crisis here, it started uh, growing fast until more or less. Uh, 2011, where it started uh, decreasing. So what happened in, in 2011? Uh, Telefonica Digital was launched to the market, showing the market that the tel telecom uh, company was trying to compete with other digital companies. And as you can see here, it was a fail. Market was not believing you that you were you, you were going to be able to compete with Apple, uh, Google, Microsoft, etc. Why? And this is my from my perspective. Why? I would highlight uh, three reasons: regulation, internet disruption, and digital culture. Regulation is a uh, uh, a tricky point for telecom uh, operators because every telecom operator in the world uh, is regulated. And that means that market access, pricing that you are um, uh, giving to, to your product, uh, you have to provide a wholesale offering to your competitors in order to compete with you. So, and, and all of this is, is regulated. You cannot set the price you want. And this is something very hard for a business because the price pricing is, as you know, one of the most strategic elements you have to compete. And you can you, you don't have freedom in order to, to set the price you, 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 for your product. And the funny thing is that uh, the other companies that in theory are competing with you of the internet uh, uh, services providers, they are unregulated. They are unregulated. So there is a, in some way, an asymmetry in competition. So, and yesterday we have we had uh, an example of what, what I am saying. As you probably know, yesterday uh, WhatsApp uh, went down for two or three hours. So. Can you say me which call center was uh, was uh, taken to the 100% of capacity with customers calls uh, asking what about what happened with the WhatsApp, the WhatsApp call center or the Telefonica call center? So everyone in Spain was calling Telefonica about what's going on with WhatsApp. 
which was a that is down. We cannot communicate. And this is a service that Telefonica is not providing. If WhatsApp were, were a, a regulated service, they must provide a call center in order to inform the customer what's going on. So this is an example about how this asymmetry in, in regulation is, uh, is something that is uh, uh, making the competition not fair uh, against uh, uh, between the telecom operators and the, and the, uh, and the internet companies. So this is the first point. Second point is internet disruption. Uh, so I think one of one of the uh, main books that uh, uh, impacted me uh, some years ago is the Innovators I Learned by Plato Business. I, I think you probably know, you know this, uh, this book, showing what, what a, a disruption is. So a disruption, a disruption consists of uh, uh, you have an incumbent providing a, a service to the market, and in some way your customers uh, feel overserved, and then a third company could come from the hands of the low end of the market, uh, competing with you in, against and uh, bringing the, that overserved customers with offerings that are good enough for for that customers. And if you can, you are if you don't have freedom in order to respond to this uh, threat, then probably you are going to be disrupted. And in the, in the market, there are many, many, many examples of what I am I'm saying. For example, uh, the, S SM, the messaging uh, uh, business that you know that uh, some years ago, for example, Telefonica was making about uh, 700 million per year in SMS messaging. And then, uh, uh, five guys uh, or six guys uh, from WhatsApp in a flat in San Francisco with uh, communications, cloud, and, and anything more. They, they, they started to compete with every telephone and also uh, Telefonica in the world. And now Telefonica is doing more or less 20 million or something like that. What's the tricky point? The tricky point is that the business model. Uh, by WhatsApp, it's not the same as the business model that, that was uh, implementing the, the telecom operator. And that's the reason why you cannot respond. Because if you respond to, to that disruptors, then you will destroy yourself by yourself. Your, your business. So this is a, a, what is known as the dilemma of the, of the innovator, uh, where an incumbent company uh, cannot uh, innovate uh, because if, if they innovate as others, you will destroy your own business. So the point is that in telecom uh, uh, services, there are many, many examples about uh, this. So voice, messaging, data communication, that, that's the last one. This is starting today, data communication, and a TV. No? And finally, digital talent. Uh, and this is uh, something I think uh, well known, and I, I, uh, I've been aware many times in, in Telefonica trying to hire uh, developers for, for my teams. No? Uh, so if you ask someone in, in a number of years of perspective in Spain about what was the coolest place to work for an engineer in 1993, it was telephone. It's the law of telephonic in 1993, but that was the coolest place. Every telecom engineer, after finishing the well, computer engineer, after finishing Studies, the best place to work was telephone. It's not out. 
to be working in the first place. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So today, today, uh, that's not the same. No? Uh, Twenty years later, the coolest places are precisely those internet uh, companies, competitors from Amazon, Google, Microsoft, for instance. Uh, and this is a big problem when you cannot hire talent and you are competing in an industry where talent is key. So finally, and this is uh, an advice to you, what you can do is I invite you to apply to Telefonica and to become the next uh, uh, corporate strategies in order to solve these problems because you are great, you are studying and you are superheroes as and we told you before. So thank you for your for your presence here. Um, I will answer any question you you have. Another question. Uh, maybe I think it was Emilia put something up there. Uh, Telefónica about the association that was here in Spain. Yeah. What went on? We've seen at the moment it has like 15 million users, mm -hmm. and then it was about the, they tried to turn it in a, into a mobile network or mm -hmm. something like that. Would not be that a case of disruptive internet like Telefónica entering the game to try to compete with Facebook, but trying to be also a social uh -huh. a mobile network, and it was being a Mm -hmm. Okay, in fact, it, it was uh, even worse. Uh, uh, Telefonica tried to compete directly with Facebook with other network that was built in house, and I don't know if you remember that was uh, known KTK. It was, if you Google it, it was in a way very, very funny that this story. Uh, maybe uh, when I retire, I will write about it. Uh, because uh, Telefonica start, not only they bought the, the 20 uh, network, but they, we bought it for other reasons that I am going to explain to you in, in a couple of minutes. Uh, by they, but they tried to compete with Facebook with a, a known product that KTK. Uh, they hired uh, Paris Hilton for an advertising in, in TV. So that, that happened. Of course, that advertising was completely a failure, and the KTK uh, thing uh, was uh, discontinued. Yeah. Facebook, of course, became what it is today, one of the main social networks. So, what's, why Telefonica bought uh, uh, 20? Uh, uh, because uh, we we were uh, forecasting that in one or two years the main uh, access to that social network uh, will be mobile and that that uh, would be a, a good uh, way to capture uh, people from that segment so young people that where Telefonica was struggling, you know, trying to bring young people to to, uh, to our mobile products because uh, because Telefonica is perceived by young people like a, a very serious or, or the, 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 the company of your father, but not not your company, your mobile company. So we bought uh, twenty in order to. Uh, in order to uh, bring uh, all, all, all this uh, cohort of, of customers. And then, in fact, we launched uh, a couple of years later a uh, mobile uh, MVNO, a uh, virtual, mo mobile virtual network operator that is called Net20, that's still uh, operating. And that's why we. we yeah. I have lots of questions, uh, but in uh, relation to that, uh, what happened in 20? Uh, what was the, when, when 20 was popular, it was super little, but uh, why it can succeed as a European social network? 
uh, it was uh, what, what happened uh, uh, inside Telefonica because we were not trying to compete with uh, Facebook. This is something that uh, the world of the company tried a couple of months, but then it was uh, clear that you don't have the capabilities and you don't have the capex in order to compete with uh, such a company. So what, but, but that doesn't mean that the, by the acquisition was a foolish acquisition because you got a, a, a thousands of young customers, you acquired that, that customer that are still in, in, in company. And uh, another question would be that um, it's just to you know your opinion uh, recently and um, Telefonica entered in the home speaker market with the uh, in Movistar Home mm -hmm. that is like this smart speaker with a screen. Mm -hmm. and, and I would like to know if uh, isn't that is um, what kind of competitive of competition is that uh, according to your presentation? And if you think that was a uh, a mistake or it was a good move uh, from the point mm -hmm. okay why would you enter this market uh, mm -hmm. why is this? okay so of course of course uh, telefonica okay as you know uh, there is a currently a battle about who is going to win your uh, home your home space right and um, and um, there, there is a market for uh, the Compo and for the Google, uh, I can't remember the name of the, the brand, the Nest, uh, and for the Alexa, Amazon Alexa, and, and whatever. Even I, I think that uh, Amazon has a version of the Alexa uh, speaker with a screen very similar to, to that of the uh, start home uh, in, in Telefonica. Uh, but uh, Telefonica thinks that there is a segment of the, of the market that is not well served with uh, those uh, products. Uh, the oldest uh, people are uh, that this could be a way to uh, to uh, target this uh, this segment. Right. Uh, but this is a this is not a, a main driver of competition by Telefonica. Telefonica is opening many 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 activities. It's like the metaverse. So last week or or uh, two weeks before, uh, there was a very big event in Telefonica about metaverse and uh, people uh, trying the classes and uh, the products and whatever. That means that Telefonica is making business or thinking about something in, in metaverse. Uh, no, it's uh, one, of, one of the experiments, uh, I would say. So I'm almost sure that, that, that only uh, device uh, of Telefonica is not, uh, not making a, a very big business in the future. But, for example, if you consider not that home uh, element, but the router that it's at home, this is a, a product designed by Telefonica. And this is something that would not uh, have happened you do not enter in, in, at some uh, time in the past in this area. Right. So experiment. Why? Right now, the home uh, device is, is an experiment. Hey, I, uh, yes, uh, for people in Zoom, guys, or connected online, do you have any questions so far? You can activate your microphone or write it down in the chat. Um, 
Okay. And uh, another question is, um, lately, uh, most uh, telecoms like uh, Orange and uh, Telefonica are entering new markets. For example, Telefonica is entering the home security, mm -hmm. super mm -hmm. right. And then uh, Orange is also having their own uh, path for financial services of India. And I would like to know why uh, right now uh, most big telecoms uh, have decided to enter these new markets. And uh, yes, uh, just to learn about mm -hmm. why they do that and how is it going. Okay. Here is the reason. So, what, why is this happening? Why your market cap is stuck or, or even declining? So, look at this picture. Uh, in 20 years, your share is more than 80, 80, 80 0% down. This is a, this is a drama. There's no way. So, why is happening uh, that? Because if you are in a, you are in an increasing competing market where your revenue and margin, and margins are going down, and you need new sources of revenue, and that's the reason why all the operators are entering uh, health, um, alarms, uh, energy uh, businesses, and why? Those businesses are not all because you are, you need in some way a capability that you already have in house. So you have a you have a distribution uh, retail channel, you have a digital channel, very efficient, you have call center, you have a, a people that, that has, has to go to, to your home in order to install fiber. So the same day you, you, you got a fiber installed at home, you could have an alarm or a solar panel. So you are sharing your capabilities and you are trying to open new uh, revenue sources. So uh, seeing this up, we, we consider that Electronica didn't took advantage from being a monopoly until the 1970s. With the realization of the electronic market, yeah, but what, what, what's that like? Uh, I mean, uh, uh, the question is like, did you consider that electronic took the advantage of having like the 100 percent of the clients in mm -hmm. the 90s? I, I know, I, ah. I live right. this moment, so I, I started in telephonic in 1994. And the liberalization of the market was in December 1998. So I was working for, for four years in a monopoly. And I, uh, what I could say to you about that is that that's the best company you can work for okay? because everything, everything is, is smooth. You don't have pressure. You, you even don't have marketing department. There were not a marketing department in Telefonica in that years because it, it was not necessary. You were not competing uh, against anything. Uh, uh, so my my from my perspective of what, what I did in, in those years is that uh, of course you, you could think that you were in a in a very uh, in a very good position in order to compete against others, but I think that you were because you, you didn't have the culture, the right culture in the, in the company to do that, and you didn't have uh, uh, in your company chart, the right uh, units to compete with companies that were uh, 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 that were starting operations uh, with a, a competitive culture and with marketing uh, guys very very uh, very strong and very smart. In, in that uh, operation. So I think that uh, it was a, a revolution. In certain, in certain I think we need to start like closing. Maybe one more question because then uh, maybe you want to approach the society at six. I think there was a, an overview. Yeah.
Yeah, no, I was just to keep the topic of the electronic energy markets and uh, diversify the network. Just to ask about uh, how is uh, the Movistar TV market going because uh, they acquired like all of our private television in Spain. And I thought it was being quite successful because they had like almost everything, but I don't know if it's in, in the smart person a lot of telephonic like that Movistar uh, part, but how is it going if it's profitable or maybe it's not? Mm -hmm. Okay, of course it is profitable. Um, in Spain, Telefonica is leader in, in TV uh, streaming. Uh, not only uh, uh, not only series, and, uh, but also live content. And the TV service has a number of features very interesting for the market, like like that, that you can. Uh, watch live programs uh, in the in last seven days and things like that that are not provided by other other platforms. And also, it is a, a good way to to sell other streamers like Netflix and like Disney Plus that, that most of them are included in the Movistar uh, offer. Because in fact. You are not competing against them. You, you, they complement very well your, your offer. But that said, that said, uh, you have here the same problem. So the, the point that, that, that you have to think is that if you can, uh, if you can compete that way in the in the long term. And the, the answer I think is that you can, but because if you don't, don't you don't have enough. Capex. I can give you an example. Uh, Netflix is that that is some competitor. It's a friend, it's a friendly, but in fact it's competing against. So Net, Netflix is 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 the uh, every year. Uh, I think more than ten billion billion dollars in content creation. Total capex of Telefonica is about two billion, but this is a capex for everything: networks, uh, construction, uh, stores, uh, etc. So you cannot compete in the long, in the long term. Uh, if you go to the news uh, in Google, uh, it was published uh, before summer that Telefonica was looking for a uh, friend. Industry, uh, industry friend. It was uh, mentioned Vivendi and Address Media in order to carve out the uh, Movistar uh, business, merge it with uh, this uh, friend, this uh, company, and uh, build something uh, bigger. So you make some cash in the, in the process. And then you have an animal that is it is uh, better for uh, for your competition rather than what that you have uh, today. But this is this operation and also this is published. Uh, I'm very careful about what I'm uh, talking about in this presentation because uh, of course uh, there is a, a lot of. Uh, points that I, I can uh, talk about, but this is published. Uh, the operation is stopped uh, because uh, uh, they are waiting in uh, for the year 2023 because there are a number of remedies uh, that the regulator imposed uh, Telefonica when they bought uh, Movistar Plus in terms of uh, wholesale pricing, etc. That will uh, be finished by 2023 so if you wait your asset will be much more valuable than so but i'm almost confident that we will see in less than say four or five years that we will have in spain uh over the top steaming competitor bigger than
Okay, I think uh, we don't have much time, but uh, it's it been very, very interesting. So, um, as a thank you gift, uh, we have something for you. So, Susanna, could you please you can do some example of the business school? And um, thank you. <laughs> we hope you like it. We know this is the new one from Telecom. Yeah. It's the first time you're in our school. Thank you. And we can also relate how to with our business. Oh, thank you. Thank you. <laughs> thank you very much. And, uh, and well, you already have uh, Jose Maria uh, social media, no? yeah. but we can make you so something approaching. Some of you have already, already contacted me via the internet, uh, so if you have any questions, I'm uh, happy to answer. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.